Give me a thumbs up. Hell like you. Everybody, welcome, welcome to the Bourbon Friday Show. Thank you guys for joining us for another really great week. It's just been really fun uh, just hanging out with you guys for the past uh, few months as we've been building the Bourbon Friday Show. Uh, so I'm your host, Christian Johnson, and I got my new, uh, actually, guest host, <laughs> Eric. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm gonna do like uh, just like some startup news real quick, and then we're gonna introduce uh, a friend of mine and founder of Focal Cast, Charlie, and we're just gonna talk to him a little bit about like what he's doing with this company and uh, what is it like to be a developer. Okay, so um, Toys R Us, what is happening with Toys R Us? Uh, they are closing all their stores nationwide. Uh, this is a big hit uh, to top uh, retailers. Um, also in startup news in St. Louis, um, a bio uh, a biotech company has just raised $3 million. Unleash Amino, um, it was uh, led by BioGenerator. Um, it's really, it was focused on um, helping um, diseases, um, actually like companies that are, are looking for, um, uh, uh, to actually just start like helping diseases, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. To me, that actually sounds like a good lineup yeah. for uh, Toys yeah. R Us toy line. Um, however, yeah. you just said it. Uh, so but. thank yeah. So anyway, um, so CIC has actually also raised fifty eight million dollars in equity um, investment uh, by HB Revis. Um, they're going to be expanding uh, worldwide, which is really really cool. Also, uh, Worldwide Technologies has just partnered up with our very own 630 Cyber uh, to extend um, their cybersecurity uh, programs. So, Eric, thank you for joining us. Uh, of course, week. no problem. I really, really appreciate it. Um, so you brought this bourbon today. Can you tell us just a little bit about uh, this bourbon and like and all the good stuff? You're the bourbon godfather, so please tell us. Sure, so what we have today is uh, for, both from Four Roses Distillery, yeah. uh, the small batch and the yellow label. Um, so basically the main difference here is there's going to be thousands of barrels going into this where there might be just 20 barrels going into this. Wow. And huh. Four Roses is interesting because they use, um, I believe it's five different, I think it's five different yeast strains and two different mash bills. So they're actually creating 10 different bourbons that will go into these products. Wow. Hmm. Huh. So is one like more expensive than the other? Sure. So no. typically you're going to have like this is is a much less expensive bottle. Mm -hmm. This is, mm -hmm. you know, just sort of your mid-tier bottle. This is a little bit higher end, which is small batch. And then yeah. there is a bottle above this in Four Roses line called Single Barrel, which wow. is, as it said, just comes yeah. from one barrel. Nice, nice, nice. Well, thank you for, very much for that. Like, okay. yeah. Um, so we love to like just hear like knowledge about bourbon i'm trying to learn more myself uh but today we have on our show a really great guy he's been here at t-rex for quite a few years now mm -hmm. um, um so uh eric do you want to you want to start off our interview sure so i just want to introduce my friend <laughs> charlie beckwith he's uh uh one of the first people at t-rex here that i like really got to know and sort of bonded with and became friend, friends with when i joined uh, he is the co-founder and CTO of Focalcast. Yeah. Um, so Focalcast is a uh, collaboration platform for uh, multiple participants uh, across any uh, browser, uh, mobile device, or uh, laptop, uh, desktop, whatever. Um, there's no download required. Yeah. There's no plugin. There's no anything. So it completely dissolves the idea of IT in the uh, real-time collaboration space. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, I guess. Uh, so, so you actually built this, like you're, you're, you're a developer, right? Yeah. So um, yeah. how it actually started was uh, it was a senior design project um, that we, uh, me and uh, Devin Turner, Devin Turner and I did at uh, Marquette university um, in, uh, 2014, uh, 2013. And, uh, we decided to spin it off and do an LLC. It started off as the first like Android application that allowed you to give like PowerPoint presentations wirelessly 
through Chromecast um, from your phone to a TV. And there was no other way to do that before. It was all these dongles and yeah. like all these cables and things like that. And now AirPlay is commonplace and um, PowerPoint's all in there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we kind of took the same concept and turned it into a web app. And uh, like um, in doing that, it freed us from, you know, the, the platform of Android or iOS or just it being a mobile device in general and um, allowed us to expand into just being a um, website that uh, could serve the same content to uh, like a broader range of customers. Hmm. So interesting. Um, so when you for like first started building this, um, did you like know how to code? Like, like how, how was that? Uh, you yourself? So, okay. Uh, I was, I was like trained classically in, uh, Java and, um, I did a lot of classes that had me using, um, Android Java. Okay. And, um, when we, when you kind of flipped from the uh, app to a web app, um, I did not know any of the languages that we use now. <laughs> Um, so our, our entire, uh, stack is the, you know, um, like, uh, I think LEP says like, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm not going to even, uh, spell that for you. Uh, 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 Postgres, uh, Angular, um, Django and, um, Redis, uh, and Node.js, uh, on the side for the real time, uh, communication protocols. Um, so, uh, I had no idea of it. I didn't know anything about those languages. It was basically just a, a dive in experience. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Me. Yeah. So, so like, so you, you guys came up with this idea. You started working on it together. Like, how was it working like with another co-founder? Like, how was that? Like, you know, you're the developer and I believe like he's like the sales guy. The front Yeah. No, guy. there was a lot of turmoil. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely because like, <laughs> There's miscommunication immediately, you know, mm, from yep. the point of somebody opening their mouth. <laughs> um, and when it's two people that are living together and we had just, you know, graduated college, our mm. startup had moved fr directly from school to um, St. Louis, yep. um, living together, working together in the same room 24 hours a day, basically. Yeah. Um, I mean, tensions could rise. Uh, they, it would never, you know, exceed any kind of like levels, but, uh, it, it was, uh, you know, we figured out how to bridge a gap between, nice. um, uh, techie and, um, <laughs> you know, somebody who's non-technical mm -hmm. and that actually turned out to be like pretty useful, uh, you know, in explaining it to people mm -hmm. in general, okay. um, just like yeah. how to, uh, I guess, um, normalify some yeah. of the terms that, gotcha. yeah, that yeah. Uh, we use. So, so um, I believe you guys also raised money. Um, how was that experience? Uh, you know, what 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 did you raise? Um, did you do arch grants, and capital innovators. Yeah. Like, so, uh, tell us about that. We um, yeah, we did. Uh, we moved here for capital innovators. Okay. Actually, okay. Um, we were at the spring class of uh, 2014, and um, then we received an arch grant. I believe in the spring of 2014. Wow. I might okay. be. Oh uh, no, 16. Yeah. Um, 16. I messed up my, my ears uh, by one. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, and uh, that, that was a, an that was an excruciating process. Um, it, but also, it was a it was a pretty rewarding one because um, we got to go through uh, you know the entire like we got to see. I mean, personally, I saw like one specific person go from uh, you know saying like this is nothing, you guys have nothing yeah. to uh, I would invest in this yeah. and then did. And yeah. <laughs> so, um, being able to like, you yeah. know, go through like mock angels yeah. and I can, yeah. and, yeah. uh, do all of those pitches, mm -hmm. um, really like help yeah. us, uh, you know, refine our, our, our strategy and, uh, definitely let us like the harshest of criticisms led us to where we are today. I guess it. Okay. So, you know, I'm, a developer by training and also went through all that self-taught thing. So tell us, tell us what it's like the daily life of a developer in a startup. Uh, Google. <laughs> <laughs> Stack Overflow. <laughs> code. Google. Stack Overflow. Code. Stack Overflow. Code. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, um, 
there's a lot of lookups, uh, a lot of a lot of references, a lot of libraries that are being used, um, and so like uh, those documents, you know, you kind of have to keep going back to, especially when you're trying to, um, you know, develop fast yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. you know it, it implement things quickly. Um, you have a lot of new different pieces to this puzzle that is you haven't even, I mean, you don't even know what it looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no box, and so you're just trying to piece it together piece by piece, uh, and you're making the pieces, I guess, also. Um, so that, I, I don't know. I, I think that probably it's probably concise. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Sure, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, like, like, most devs you have basically eternal days and long nights, and um, or at least you so, used to. Yeah, yeah. Much. <laughs> the number of times that I've stayed up all night uh, programming uh, over the past three years probably exceeds the number of nights that I slept. <laughs> I would I, I would guess uh, mostly due to this um, Indian um, uh, like recruit uh, recruit recruit how many the word here um, uh, contract contract okay. um, this contract uh, company that we used um, so. We uh, we had a twenty thousand dollar contract with them, and uh, we needed to see if this app got done, and I needed to see that the work got done the way that we wanted to do it. And because of the time change, um, actually, like I actually had to shift my schedule, my my sleep schedule from uh, to nocturnal, uh, essentially, because um, like we we needed to get our money's worth. We needed to get the product out that we wanted to. So I, I switched over to Nocturnal and I stayed on and made sure that uh you know instead of like you know scrum meetings in the mornings, it was uh like Overwatch. Uh like uh, I don't know that what's that that Terminator thing. Uh <laughs> Sky 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 uh Skynet? Skynet, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Watching. And trying to do that. So uh, uh yeah. Okay. I don't know. Definitely, de definitely one of the worst parts. <laughs> de definitely one of like the worst periods of my life. Just, just be being nocturnal is not natural. No, I, I, I think it's is, uh, is a uh, fundamentally flawed idea <laughs> to, to think that you can uh, switch your your schedule to that. Um, yeah. But people do it. People do, yeah. do it. Yeah, okay. I, I believe I, I sort of met you around that time period, uh, and I do remember that very, very much so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I you know, personally, like, the longest day I've ever had was 32 hours, and which that's the kind of thing you have to put down. I can probably say 78. Yeah, see, we're just going to one-up. Yeah. I'm not even going to try to one-up. I'm saying like, <laughs> legitimately, legitimately 78. 78. Yeah. Uh, Actually, that was this year. Wow. That was this year. Uh, it was uh, That was a tough one. Uh, the, it was something that needed to get done. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. and the, yeah. Sometimes you, I, just, I, sometimes you, you just have to go. Yeah, yeah. You don't have a choice. Yeah, you, you don't have a choice, finish it. for sure. Yeah. Yep. So I think. Yeah. True. Um. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah. No, no, that's okay. Um, yeah, so, Charlie, um, it's really cool just to, like, really just hear about your journey as a developer. Um, a lot of times, like, people are looking to... Um, be developers or, or get in touch with developers. It seems like... Uh, it seems like a lot of times, like they, they don't know like how to do that. Um, if somebody is looking to even become a developer, what are some like the first steps that you would just advise them to do? Uh, there's a lot of different ways that I approach this. I think it'd be on an individual basis, but I guess in general, um, those code academies. Uh, I mean, they're failing for a solid reason, I think, uh, in that they teach specific skill sets uh, under under like a particular guise. Um, whereas, like, I was, you know, taught to, uh, like, search for myself. Okay. Um, and so the motivation really has to come from inward okay. uh, in this, you know, kind of, uh, you know, platform. Okay. And... Uh, that that for me i think uh is the most important part uh yeah. is is that you personally are committed to learning um the certain language if yeah. if you're only like half-hearted you're only going to get yeah. that much out so you get out what you put in and um it, yeah. to get started there's a million there's a million places to get started okay. there's like uh, i mean just 
like 101, any language, yeah. any framework, any like like Django, Python, yeah. Yeah. Uh, JavaScript, yeah. Java, uh, C Sharp. Uh, you just, just could type that. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. a million resources yeah. out there. So can I ask you like, what really makes you passionate about developing and being a developer? Uh, the for me, um, it was the idea that. I, there was no single one way to do anything. Okay. Um, that's what I really loved about it. Uh, creating, were, I guess, too. Yeah. Like, I, well, there, yeah. there's not. So somebody tells you to do something, and yeah. it's like, well, how do you build this? Uh, mm -hmm. How do you how do you build this wall? And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. There, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it, yeah. and and you get to decide with your own you know skill sets uh, yeah. what the best way to build that wall is. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, actually, I don't. I, <laughs> formally stated do not build that wall but uh <laughs> um, i just chose that as a poor <laughs> it's euphemism. okay it's okay um, it's okay anyways uh but uh yeah like uh i don't know so it's okay it's yeah hard to backtrack from that actually. <laughs> it's uh, okay so can you tell us like um you know so you've been in t-rex um I, i'm very curious like what type of spaces do you developers like do they like dark rooms and coding or do like what like what like what does your office look like um my office okay so i i can't stand fluorescent mm -hmm. lights okay. um so i have uh about three different types of uh lights that yeah. face away from me okay. uh, at the wall um and I don't know. The room's not super inviting because I don't really want you to come in. <laughs> uh, that that's yeah on purpose. Yeah, uh, not by accident. <laughs> and um, but there's also times when I uh, want to be around other people too, and um, I like can venture down to the co-working space okay. um, from time to time, um, or find like a silent room, mm -hmm. um, just depending on like I guess the mood. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Nice, nice also stuff, also well thank you thank you so much um but it's really cool that you're like you're sh sharing this knowledge with us but there's so many people out there that are trying to look and like be developers and they just don't well, know how well, so. there's there's <laughs> an unlimited number of resources yeah. out there for yeah. you and and ultimately there's there's no excuse because yeah. uh yeah. anybody can do anything anybody can be a game developer now anybody mm -hmm. can be you know, a web developer. Yeah, try, yeah. There is the the barrier to entry is the internet, and mm -hmm. and that that's it. Uh, yeah. And a computer, I suppose. <laughs> uh, you can go very far, but a Raspberry Pi costs thirty five dollars, but you also need a computer to <laughs> program that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, yeah. so they need a Chromebook, I guess, uh, or something. Uh, that's <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, Charlie, so much for being on. Eric, for being my guest host, I really appreciate it. Uh, we're here live at T Rex. Uh, Bourbon Friday is uh, sponsored by EQ. Uh, they are really doing a great job of like really telling what's happening in the uh, St. Louis startup ecosystem. So thank you to EQ um, and all our sponsors. Um, we want to like just really just start to um, just really tell more stories. So if you're interested in being on on our show, please contact uh, us on our Facebook page, the EQ Facebook page. Um, just contact us. Let us know um, about whatever you're doing. If you want to contact Charlie, hit them up. Can you tell us where um, they can contact you real quick? Yeah, my Instagram is uh, <laughs> Instagram.com slash Charlie Beckwith. Uh, okay. That's the best place to contact me. Yeah. You can okay. follow me um, and then you can message me. I will message you back. Okay, um, awesome. That's honestly the, the, the best place to reach me at. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just have uh, one more thing to add. Uh, every, every step that I took to get here um, was me saying yes to something. Uh, oh. I never, uh, the opportunities came to me and I said yes to them. Uh, Devin uh, found me through a mutual friend and um, asked me if I wanted to start a company. And uh, kind of with no hesitation, I was like, uh, I actually believe in this and okay, let's do it. And um, then we got accepted into Capital Innovators after uh, receiving a, uh, after getting into the Rice Business Plan competition yeah. and um, walking away with a $3,000 cash prize and a $50,000 investment prize, which had terrible terms. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it was like soul crushing. Uh, you gotta read the terms. Startup yeah, ruining yeah. terms. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like 
it was it was that, and then you know saying yes to Capital yeah. Innovators and moving yeah. away to St. Louis. Yeah, uh, saying yes. And saying yes, saying yes, Honestly. yes, 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 yes. Um, never That's underestimate it. the power of just saying yes to your future, to your goals, to your dreams. Thank you guys so much. We had a great time. We will see you guys later um, next week at 4.30. All right, guys. Later.